Today we're going to look at the use of CSV sheets in AI and see how they can enhance our live patches. So first of all we should take a look at what a CSV sheet is. So I've got an example here. So a CSV sheet is a comma separated value sheet. So as you can see we've got series of values here and each of those values is separated by a comma which denotes that it's a separate um, field for information. Um, now with AI we can access these rows and columns live with our patches um, and the other advantage to this is that CSV is a very common format used amongst programming and it's very very easy to write to. Um, very common things like notepad will write to it, you can use word processors, you can use spreadsheets and so on. Um, so what we'll do, when we move along a little bit with our patch, I'll actually open this up in OpenOffice, which is a uh, an open source um, office suite, um, which allows you to work with CSV sheets. Although you can see the one I'm working with here is just purely in Notepad. Okay, so first of all, let's get our patch built up. So in Salvation, I'm going to insert module. Now, th to read the CSV sheet, we need to go to the file I.O., the file in-out section. And the second one down, the CSV file reader, is what we're going to choose. So I'm just going to place that in my patch. Then what we need to do, we need to give this two um, sets of instructions. We need to tell it which column to look at and which row to look at. And I'm going to do those with constants, and I'm going to put them onto the text alternate skin, like so. So I'll just copy and paste that one so that I've got two of them, and connect them to the column and row inputs. Okay, so once we've got our data read, we actually need to print that data to the screen. Um, now, if you have a look within the text section, you'll see there's one called um, string texture. So you'll see this mention of string quite a lot. A string is a collection of characters which are not numbers. Um, so obviously in the case of text, that's what we need to use as opposed to a constant. So I'm going to connect the string out port from the CSV file reader module and I'm going to connect it to the string input port on the string texture model. Um, now to get the texture onto a window, we've got a green texture output, so we're going to go back for our old favourite, the generator rectangle, because that has our green input, our texture input. And then at the bottom of that we're going to add a GL window, just so that we can see the output there. Let me just move that up a little bit. There we go. Oh, and I selected the wrong one. Down to GL window. There we go. Okay, so I've got my window active but we're not actually seeing anything yet. So there's a couple of parameters we need to still set on the string texture module. We need to give it a size and a texture size. So the, the font size is just how big the characters will be and the texture size is the overall texture in which the fonts are drawn. So for the font size I can just use a single constant. So I'm just going to copy one of those and connect him in. I'm going to give it an average size of 50. We can adjust that later. Now for the texture, because it's an X and a Y, we need a vector rather than a single constant. So in the math section, we have a vector join. So I'm going to place that there, and I'm just going to copy two of those text constants, and plug one into the first port and one into the second port. Whenever we're using a vector, we don't need to use a specific type of vector join module for different types of parameter. It will just assume that our vectors are ordered as you would expect. So if I was doing translation, it would be X, Y, Z. Um, if I was doing um, texture mapping, it would be U, V, W, and so on. Um, in this particular case, it's X and Y because that defines the size and area of our texture. Okay, so now I just need to give that a texture size. I'm going to go 320 by 240. And all we need to do now is point this CSV file reader towards an existing CSV sheet. So I'm going to press set file, and then I'm going to navigate to my desktop where I have that example. There we go. And straight away we can see a letter there. Um, now if I just open up the example sheet as well, there we go, and we can see what's happening. So one of the key things with this, this will always... Um, the CSV file reader will always ignore the first line. That allows you to put in any annotations or notes that you need for that specific CSV file. 
So in our terms, uh, the first line is actually the second line in the file. So if I actually adjust these values and roll my mouse over, say, the column, we can see that at the moment we've got A, so A is a value of 0. I'm thinking that 1 will give me B, 2 for C, and 3 for D. So let's give that a try. So 1 for B, 2 for C, and 3 for D. And then obviously my rows will take me down those rows. So we can see I'm on the second row down now. Then we go to the third row and the fourth row. Now, the nice thing about CSV sheets is we can update these in real time. And as soon as they're saved, um, AI will access the latest version. So if I exchange that value there, so we're actually referencing this first cell at the moment and as soon as I press save we should see the output update in real time like so so that's great so what we need to do next we need to actually start thinking about making this into a useful patch so let's convert it into a score chart now I've actually got a score chart here here we go there's another CV CSV um, you can see I've put my column names at the top, the name of the player, the amount of points they have and the amount of fouls they have and I'm going to show you some tricks that we can do with uh, our spreadsheet software to order these in real time and make sure that we get the winners at the top and the losers at the bottom according to the parameter we've arranged them by. But first of all what we need to do is we need to multiply up this um, CSV reader a little bit because we're going to use one of these for each value that we want to show on our score chart. So first of all I'm just going to have a quick little shuffle around and tidy up a bit because it's always nice to have a good working area like so. Okay cool. Now what I'm also going to do here because I'm going to use multiple instances here I'm going to move my window down I'm going to put a render merge into the window so that's GL render merge. The render merge allows us to take multiple GL streams and combine them into a single stream go for the correct one we want for inputs like so I'll just turn those all on I'm also going to put in a scale and a translation because this is just going to help me a little bit scale and GL translate just slightly off the edge of my screen there there we go so GL translate and scale. So I'm going to put those after the rectangle and before the render merge and connect the output of the render merge to my window module. We should still, there we go, we can still see that one there. So now that I've made one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this up. Now, rather than me changing all the individually the font sizes and individually the texture sizes, I'm going to just pull those off to the side and then I'm going to just, this middle section here, I'm just going to duplicate that, copy, paste, like so. And then we'll connect that one into our second port on the render merge. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to just translate this over a little bit, like that. Let's just make our window a little bit wider. So you can see they're overlapping at the moment. There we go. Now let's just relocate to our scores chart that we've got here. So I'm going to use the set file button um, and in here I am going to load my scores. Uh, there we go and let's use that one as well. So we're going to go desktop scores and then so on this second module I've got my name on the first one but I'm going to go for points on the second one so that is my second column like so. Okay great so we've got our first line in there now what I'm going to do just to make life a little bit easier a little bit of a super trick here I'm going to select all of these modules because that makes one row of my score and I'm going to press Control G to group them together like so and then what I'm going to do I'm going to just duplicate that up again Whoops. Let's just select that, copy that, paste that. I'm going to put another render merge after there. Put both of those into there. And take the output, place it down there, like so. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to come in and we're going to move the other ones down. So let's bring him down a little bit, like so. And that one down as well. Okay. 
cool. So what I'm going to do with the second one, I'm going to put this onto the second row. One, one. And then I'm going to do this one more time so that I've got three places. So we're going to have a top three here. So again, copy and paste my patch. My render merge needs more ports, so I'm going to load alternate skin and put four inputs. Put that into the third port like so. And again, we're going to go in and we're just going to bring those down just a little bit more like so. Okay, great. Now, I've just got to make that final one. Just bring that one over a little bit. Let us make um, the final one reference the third row, like so. Okay. So, just for now, I'm going to just tidy this up a little bit. And we're going to save the patch. And then we're going to make it look a little bit more attractive. So just bring that side over to there. That one down to there. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a quick save. Save as. Um, and we're going to call this score chart. Okay. So, the next thing we want to do, we probably want some kind of nice background image. Now, I've actually got an image that I've already made. If I just zoom that up. So you can see I've just made a static image here. I've made it sort of look a bit scoreboardy. I've got a picture of a stadium in the background. I've even given it some nice sort of shadow under the boxes there. And what I'm aiming to do is I'm going to have my text placed so that it falls within those boxes. So let's just close that one down. So I'm going to use a texture module. So that's import texture. Then I'll lo locate my image file. There we go. And he needs to go through a rectangle so that I can put him into the merge. Now what I really need to do there, in fact, I need to actually put him underneath the other one. So he's going to go in the first port and I'm just going to move the other one down. Like so. Like so. Okay, cool. In fact, I need to put those in a different order. So we're going to have one and they need to be in the order in which I originally place them. There we go, like so. Now, um, you'll notice that I'm not seeing through the background of the text. It's not applying an alpha channel or anything. So actually what I think I need to do, I need to apply blend mode to the output of this render merge, then go into another render merge and combine it with my, uh, my texture there. So let's just take that one out. Disconnect that one. He'll get into that one there. I'm going to use a blend mode, so that's GL uh, bl blend mode, there we go. We'll take the output of that render merge, put it into the render merge there, and then let's just connect that window there, like so. Okay, great. So hopefully now, there we go, so we can see all of that texture, the text on top of the texture. Um, now the problem we're going to get here, you, you'll see that things are going to size differently. My um, text is kind of relative to the overall screen piece. Um, now I'm going to just, just kind of shuffle these down a bit and get them to sit in the boxes first of all. So first of all, let's open up my top line here. In fact, let's just take my font size down first, that will be good. So we're going to go down to something like that. 14 looks about right to me. Um, so next we're going to bring that top line down, like so, and let's just bring it across on the X, and down a little bit more, that's looking good. Okay, so down on my Y on that one, probably over a little bit on the X, cool, and then I'm going to just repeat that with the other two lines. So across with my X, down on my Y, across with my X, down on my Y. And the last one, across with my X, whoop, it would help if I can see him, across with my X, up with the Y, and last but not least, up with the Y on that one, across on the X. 
Okay, great. So we've kind of got things in a nice position now. Um, my text is a little bit jaggedy. I think this is down to the size of the texture I'm using. Uh, let's just see if changing that makes a difference. Um, so let's say... In fact, I'm not going to worry about that at all at the moment. Let's just leave that as it is, and we'll come back to that. Okay. So now, hopefully, when I scale that up, we'll find that my text should stay in the same place. And there we go. Even when we shrink that down, he's going to stay in that same place now. There we go. So let's put that there. So now, now that we've got that up and running, let's just give that a quick save. Let's move that one out of the way. So we're going to save that as our completed patch. Cool. Now, I just very quickly want to just show you a couple of quick little tricks with... Um, obviously, Notepad is great for writing these down very instantly. But if we go into something like Open Office, um, let me just go to there, my desktop, my score chart. There we go. And we want to make sure that a comma is cho chosen in the separated by section. And you get this little preview here. We can see these separate columns here. You can see I've got my player column, my points column, and my fouls column. Okay, now let's just bring that down very, very slightly. So this is where the CSV sheet starts to become really useful. So if you can imagine that we've got a panel of judges during our sports event. Um, and during the show, they're rewarding all these different points. Um, and they want to say... Maybe they want to display winner first and loser last. We want to know the top three here. So if we look at these scores, we can see that Tony has 9, Steve has 12, and Dave has 21. If we look further down this chart here, we can actually see that on the other lines, Harry has 24 and Mike has 26. So in reality, we actually want, um, if we want to order by points, we, we need Mike at the top and Tony at the bottom. Now, there's a really nice way that you can do this in... Um, uh, spreadsheet programs and it's called sorting order so what I do is I just select all of my values there and what I'm going to show you is specific to open office but there are the same functions available in programs like Excel as well and in my data column I've got the option to sort now when I go into there I can choose the column which I'm sorting so this is column B I want to sort by and then I want descending I want the highest at the top and so hopefully when I press OK, we'll see the, these all reorder according to the points value owned by each player, like so. And now as soon as I press save, we should see that update when I press keep current format. We should see our score chart update in real time. There we go. So you can see it's put in the, the correct scores there. So... With a CSV sheet, you could have, um, this can be accessed over a network as well, so you could have your judges have a remote server on which they enter their scores into the spreadsheet, and we take the value over a network cable, plumb it straight into AI, and you've got a real-time score sheet with real-time updates.